Methods for controlling moss on putting greens are as a topic we get questions on a lot. This is Dr. Wendy Galernter, and today I'm just going to give you a quick update on some recent research results that were reported at the Crop Science uh, Society of America meetings 2010, and they relate to methods and also products for controlling moss. First, just a little bit of background. Silvery thread moss, or Brium argenteum, is a basically a weed pest, uh, mostly on cool season putting greens, but we occasionally also see it on warm season turf putting greens as well. It's very difficult to control because most of the materials that control moss are also very good at controlling turf grass. So the issue has always been, what can we find that's very selective for moss and yet very safe for turf? And over the years, a great deal of research has been conducted, and really we've come down to two products. Quicksilver or carfentrazone, which is an herbicide, and daconil or chlorothalonil, which is a fungicide. Uh, so neither of them originally developed to control moss. They're both relatively effective, but we're always looking for new cultural controls and also new products so that we can rotate methods for controlling moss. In work done by Cole Thompson and his colleagues at uh, Kansas State University, they looked at three different products for controlling moss. Potassium bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate, and also a product called Moss Buster, which is based on uh, an oil that's extracted from oregano. They did spot treatments with these products as well as broadcast treatments. And what they found was, unfortunately, the number one uh, as far as broadcast treatments go, none of the products was particularly effective. However, when they used them as spot treatments, all were quite effective at removing moss. The problem was, though, as I mentioned earlier, they also were very damaging to turf at the rates that actually controlled the moss. So potassium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, um, damaging to turf, the Moss Buster, which is based on the oil of oregano, any product that is oil-based, we always have a question about phytotoxicity or damage to turf, so it's always good to ask or try it out yourself to see on a small area if those products are effective. But at this point anyway, those three products have sort of fallen into the same category as many others before them. It's possible to control moss, but at the rates that are effective, you also damage turf grass. So we're still, unfortunately, stuck just with quicksilver and chlorothalamol as our two products. However, as far as cultural practices go, another group, uh, Eric Lyons and his colleagues at the University of Guelph in Canada, looked at how irrigation practices affect moss invasion. And what they found is maybe what you might expect, and that is that Frequent, shallow irrigation perpetuated moss, whereas deep and infrequent irrigation helped to keep it under uh, relative control. It didn't make it go away, uh, but it was certainly a better management method. So keeping the top layer wet encourages moss growth. The other thing they looked at was uh, methods for applying fertilizers, and they looked at three urea-based products. One applied as a foliar fertilizer, one applied as a watered-in liquid fertilizer, and another applied as a granule. And again, what you might expect is what they saw, and that is that the foliar fertilizer, where the nutrition was kept in the top of the uh, turf profile, encouraged the growth of moss the most. The watered-in liquid fertilizer was kind of in between, and the granular fertilizer, which is watered in, and most of the nutrients went below the turf surface, was the one that encouraged the least amount of moss growth. So definitely keeping water, keeping nutrients below the turf surface seems to help to keep turf, uh, moss under control. We have no magic bullet uh, for moss yet, but these two studies certainly further uh, our knowledge of it for now. Thanks.